Today, we are confronted with the fantastic flights of rockets far out into space at speeds of 18,000 miles per hour. Commercial airliners, many of them with powerful jet propulsion engines that need no propellers, can take passengers anywhere in the world in a matter of hours. But once our world was a dim, unknown expanse with many shut-in peoples. Each tribe was strange to the other. Each civilization was hemmed in by great natural barriers. Steep slopes made high mountain ranges impassable. The unfriendly expanse of vast, dry plains kept apart people dwelling in more fertile areas. Far-reaching wastes of treacherous desert lands for bad travel. Many dangers lurked in the depths of timbered wildernesses, making travel both dangerous and difficult. Wide rivers for a long time defied the boatless traveler. And the greatest barriers were the waters of the endless oceans. Surrounded by these waters, the Western Hemisphere contained all the other barriers known to man. Progress has been due, in the main, to breaking down these barriers, largely through improving our means of transportation. The 13 colonies, as a nation, fell heir to the rich wilderness west to the Mississippi. Later came many additions of undeveloped lands, Louisiana and Florida, Texas, Oregon, California, and lastly, the Gadsden Purchase. Within 70 years, this nation spread 3,000 miles. Pioneers began to move into these undeveloped lands, and at once the Appalachian Mountains loomed as a barrier. Farther beyond lay dark forests and swift flowing rivers and broad dry plains that sloped upward to the snow-capped mountains, deep gorges and deserts of the Rockies. Crude roads winding through the Appalachians were tedious and unsatisfactory. So, the Erie Canal was built to help the westward movement. Meanwhile, that never satisfied group, the inventors, were improving on James Watt's early steam engine and the day of the railroad dawn. Early locomotives and trains presented many problems to the traveler. But as the railroad industry grew, larger, more powerful, faster and safer engines and cars were developed. With electrical power came all electric trains. In some sections, electric motors replaced the steam locomotive. Another development, the perfection of the diesel engine, made possible the heavy-duty engines which today pull most of our long-distance trains. New designs for locomotives and cars have kept railroads abreast of modern developments. The growth of railroads contributed greatly to the development of the United States. The spread of our railroad network is shown by this map. In 1830, an experiment. Within 20 years, a great industry. By 1870, the continent spanned. By 1890, well-established lines of transportation nationwide. Today, all sections of our country closely linked. The invention of the gasoline engine gave to the world another kind of power, which made possible the automobile. In growing from a hand crank and sometimes exasperating experiment to today's speedy, powerful vehicle, the automobile has made great changes in our ways of living. America's millions of automobiles have demanded the replacement of roads such as this. By a system of broad, durable highways to speed the nation's traffic throughout every section of the land. The growth of our system of federal highways is shown on this map over that of the railways. And now the development of state highways. Transportation has played an important part in the industrial development of our country. 
raw materials need to be taken over land and over countless waterways to great manufacturing centers where they are made into hundreds of products for shipment to distributing centers and from there to individual users. Land transportation ends at great harbor terminals. Here, ocean-going ships wait to receive both passengers and cargo of every description destined for the four corners of the earth. Our cities have created other needs for transportation. Our city streets have become congested with traffic. This has led to the building of freeways and expressways through the cities. City dwellers who don't have their own cars may use buses and taxi cabs. And many cities still operate trains on elevated tracks and in subways built under crowded streets. People not caring to live in large cities where they work are carried from small suburban towns by countless commuters' trains. The task of distributing foods, merchandise, and other materials necessary for life in towns and cities is performed by many kinds of trucks. A city without trucks soon becomes in dire need. Thus, the development of transportation has broken down many barriers to human relationships. The hearts of mountains have been pierced by railroad tunnels. Mountain sides have been cut open and highways planted there. Vast areas of wilderness formerly seldom traveled by man are now crossed in modern streamlined trains with increasing speed and safety. Great modern superhighways have replaced the once lonely trails over which the early traveler labored. High above broad rivers, we have built strong bridges of steel, planned so as to meet our needs for years to come. We no longer pause at the banks of rivers, but cross upon these bridges with traffic of every description. We span the rivers with boats and make highways of inland waterways that were once barriers to land travel. And what of the widespread seas, those early bearers of travel and commerce? They too have been conquered by modern transportation. Great ships now take us and our goods to the farthest parts of the earth. They defy distance and storm and bring the world to us. They cross the roughest seas in comfort and safety and within a few days. Lastly, we have scorned the natural barriers of land and sea and have taken to the air in our never satisfied desire to go more quickly from place to place. Our airplanes fly faster than sound and this huge jet propelled airliner spans the continent or the seas in a few hours. Over the intricate map of our railroads and highways have been blazed the paths now regularly followed by thousands of airplanes. Within the past century, our streetcars, buses, automobiles, elevated trains, subways, passenger and freight trains, together with many kinds of trucks, have helped to develop our country and to make possible our industrial civilization. The demands of modern life call constantly for great speed, greater convenience, and greater safety in transportation. Many kinds of ships on river, lake, and ocean continue to offer improved service. For commerce or recreation, these vessels ply throughout all waters and help us to exchange goods and ideas with the world's people. And now a new breakthrough. The immense power of the atom has been harnessed, as in this submarine, to run ships for years without refueling. Speed is most in demand in the work of surmounting time and space. In our aircraft, by almost daily new speed and distance records, bid fair to contribute most in the future. Who can foretell how fast and how far our continuing achievements in transportation will eventually take us.